We have by now introduced you to several treatment technologies for fecal sludge. Treatment that provides an adequate level of environmental and public health protection requires the combination of several of these treatment technologies, which have different treatment objectives. In this module, we'll walk you through the process flow of this treatment plant here in Kampala, Uganda, and have a closer look at the design of settling thickening tanks and unplanted drying beds. Following this module, you'll be able to draw the process flow of the fecal sludge treatment plant in Kampala and design settling thickening tanks and unplanted drying beds. Welcome to the Lubiji Wastewater and Fecal Sludge Treatment Plant in Kampala, which is being operated by the National Water and Sewerage Corporation since 2013. Thanks to Fichtner Water and Transportation that designed this treatment plant, we are able to share the design example of this treatment plant with you, which was slightly modified for training purposes. Lubiji is designed for the treatment of 400 cubic of fecal sludge that are mostly developed by vacuum trucks that collect fecal sludge from septic tanks and pit latrines. A characterization study conducted before the treatment design estimated average concentration of solids, organics, nutrients and pathogens. For example, 26.4 kg total solids per cubic meter of fecal sludge. Following this charge at Lubigi, fecal sludge passes through screens for removal of solid waste and flows by gravity into settling thickening tanks for solid and liquid separation. As discussed in another module, the design of settling thickening tanks is based on a settling velocity and a solid liquid separation efficiency. For LOBG, a settling velocity of 0.125 meters per hour and a solid liquid separation efficiency of 80% were used in the design. These values were selected from preliminary guidelines developed by Sundek and its research partners in Ghana. The first step in the design of the settling thickening tank at LOBG was calculation of the surface area based on the maximum amount of fecal sludge delivered per hour, which is called the peak flow. In the design of Lubigi, it was assumed that at some days, a maximum of 600 cubic of fecal sludge will be delivered per day, within 10 hours of operation. We can calculate the peak flow by dividing the maximum daily discharge volume by the operating hours. With this information, we calculate the peak flow to 60 cubic meters per hour. We can then calculate the required surface area by dividing the peak flow by the settling velocity. This results in an area requirement of the settling thickening tank of 480 square meters. The second step in the design of the settling thickening tank at Lubigi was to determine the tank depth. This slide shows a cross section of a settling thickening tank. Settling thickening tanks are commonly separated into different layers. These are called the scum layer, the clear water or supernatant layer, the separation layer and the thickening layer. The scum layer is the layer where the scum accumulates, the clear layer includes the liquid effluent and the separation and thickening layer is where settling and thickening occurs. Based on the preliminary guidelines developed in Ghana, for Lubigi, a scum layer of 0.8 meter, a clear water layer of 0.5 meter and a separation layer of 0.5 meter was considered for the design. The depth of the thickening layer needs to be calculated based on the volume of sludge that needs to be stored in this layer. The settling thickening tank in Kampala was designed based on a loading period of 30 days. With this information we can calculate the mass of total solids that will accumulate in the settling thickening tank during this period by multiplying the average daily discharge volume by the total solids concentration of the sludge and the solid liquid separation efficiency with 30 days. This results in a mass of 253 tons of total solids. The design of Lubigi considered that 50% of this sludge is pumped once a week onto unplanted drying beds and only the remaining 127 tons total solids require storage capacity in the four settling thickening tank layers. According to the design, the sludge that would not be pumped would be removed following the 30 day settling and thickening period with front loaders and transported to covered storage areas as shown here. To calculate how much of these 127 tons accumulate in the thickening layer, the design needs to estimate the amount of total solids in the four layers of a settling thickening tank. Lubigi assumed similar total solids concentrations than those included in the preliminary guidelines from Ghana of 160 kg per cubic in the scum layer, 5 kg per cubic in the clear water layer, 60 kg per cubic in the separation layer, and 140 cubic per cubic meter in the thickening layer. With this information and the surface area that we calculated before, we can calculate how much total solids are included in the scum, 
clear water and separation layer by multiplying the area with the depth and the total solids concentration of the layer. As the total mass was 127 tons TS, this means that 77 tons total solids will be stored in these layers, whereas 15 tons total solids will require storage in the thickening layer. We can then calculate the volume of the thickening layer by dividing this mass by the total solids concentration in the thickening layer. This results in 357 cubic. By dividing this volume by the surface area of the tank, we calculate the depth of the thickening layer to around 0.7 meters. This means that the settling thickening tank has a total depth of 2.5 meters and a total volume of 1200 cubic. The third step in the design of the settling thickening tank in Lubigi was to select the width and the length. This slide shows the top view of two settling thickening tanks, with sludge flowing from the right to the left side. Settling thickening tanks are usually 5 to 10 meters longer than they are wide to allow settling and thickening of particles. At Lubigi, settling thickening tanks were sized as 10 meters wide and 50 meters long. This picture shows the settling thickening tanks at Lubigi as they were constructed. Two tanks were constructed to allow reliable operation during sludge removal and maintenance. Fecal sludge pumped from the settling thickening tanks during this 30 day period requires further dewatering and drying. At Lubigi, sludge from these settling thickening tanks is dewatered and dried on unplanted drying beds. As discussed in another module, the hydraulic loading rate and the solid loading rate are design parameters that are specific to unplanted drying beds. For the design of Lubigi, a hydraulic load of 0.3 meters and a solid rating rate of 300 kg total solids per square meter and year was used for the design. The first step in the design of the drying bed at Lubigi was calculation of the drying bed area based on the hydraulic loading rate. We calculated before that 127 tons of total solids will require treatment on unplanted drying beds within this 30 day period. The design assumes that sludge pumped from settling thickening tanks has a total solids concentration of 80 kg per cubic meter, which means that 12.5 cubic meter of sludge are around 1 ton of total solids. With this information, we can calculate the volume of sludge that will be pumped on drying beds within 30 days by multiplying the mass of sludge to be pumped by 12.5 cubic meter per ton total solids. These are 1588 cubic meter. Based on a local climate, the design assumes that a loading, dewatering, drying and unloading cycle on these drying beds, which are covered, will take around 30 days. With this information, we can calculate the required drying bed area by dividing the volume discharged onto drying beds by the hydraulic loading rate. This means that 5,292 square meters are required. In the second step, the required drying bed area was validated with the maximum solid loading rate. By dividing the number of operation days per year by the days of one drying cycle, we can calculate the drying beds will be loaded around 12.2 times per year. By multiplying the number of cycles with the mass of sludge loaded onto one drying bed per cycle, divided by the drying bed area, we can calculate the solid loading rate as 293 kilograms total solids per square meter and year. This is in reason to the solid loading rate considered for the design. This slide shows the drying beds at Lubigi. As you can see they were covered and the drying bed area was distributed into 18 equally sized drying beds. As shown in this picture, at Lubigi, effluents from settling thickening tanks and drying beds and wastewater are co-treated in parallel in three anaerobic waste stabilization ponds followed by two facultative waste stabilization ponds. Sludge from these waste stabilization ponds is then being dewatered and dried on these uncovered drying beds shown here. In this module, we walked you through the process flow of the Lubigi wastewater and fecal sludge treatment plant in Kampala, where settling thickening tanks, drying beds, waste stabilization ponds and storage are combined for treatment. We also introduced you to the design of settling thickening tanks and drying beds. These were designs were based on preliminary guidelines developed in Ghana. In the absence of clear design standards for fecal sludge treatment technologies, monitoring of treatment plans like Lubigi could be really important to improve the designs for future implementations.